Hello, Brandon from the Wenatchee River Institute. We really miss seeing your faces at school and out at our campus. We're gonna do another video today for you talking about all animals need a home. Hey, Katie here. And all animals need homes, including us because we're animals, right? And they make their homes according to their needs. Hey, it's Naomi. Different animals construct their homes in different ways, but all animals have the ability to change their environment to meet their needs. Whether it's a beaver's lodge, a bird's nest, or an ant's hill, animals construct their homes using the tools on their body and the resources around them in their environment. Let's go on a nature walk together to search for animal homes. Let's go! <laughs> Brandon spotted a pileated woodpecker. Pileated woodpeckers typically nest in dead trees, which this woodpecker has done. Pileated woodpeckers hammer out a home in a tree using their beak. For the finishing touches, the bird climbs all the way into the hole and chips away at it from the inside. Pileated woodpeckers don't line their nests with any material except for leftover wood chips. The nest construction usually takes three to six weeks, and nests are rarely reused in later years. Other birds construct nests gathering grasses, sticks, leaves, and other materials, as you can see here. Some even add their own feathers. Check out this nest that we found on our nature walk. If you look closely, you can see that it's made up of dried grass, moss, and what is that you see? Plastic. Brandon found a wasp nest on our nature walk. Wasps make their nests by chewing wood pulp and mixing it with their saliva. Let's keep walking to see what else we can find. We found busy ants on our walk. Ants build their homes underground. Their underground home is made up of chambers or rooms that are connected by tunnels. These small rooms are used for storing food, nurseries to raise their young, and even resting places for the worker ants. Ant homes are built by worker ants who dig the tunnels and rooms. They then carry the tiny bits of dirt in their mandibles. Mandibles are the jaws of an ant which you can see here near the ant's mouth. Using their mandibles, the worker ants then redeposit the dirt they dug out onto the surface, sometimes forming an anthill in the process. Now, let's toss our binoculars off and continue our nature walk in Wenatchee. Hi, it's Elisa from the Wenatchee River Institute. I'm at the Haran Natural Area, right next to Walla Walla Park in Wenatchee. Let's go look for evidence of animals changing their environment. The Haran Natural Area sits right next to the Columbia River. And here, we found evidence of a beaver. We may not be able to always catch an animal changing its habitat, but we can make predictions or guesses. This robin could be collecting mud to create its own nest. Here at the Haran, I found a nest that probably fell from a tree. There is a hole in it. It is amazing that a bird can use twigs and grasses and all of the resources around it to take care of its young. Still got some gray feathers in there. Some bird scat. Whenever we find something neat in nature, we have to follow the leave no trace principles. So we'll put it back where it is. All animals need a home. Birds, beavers, ants, even you and I need a place to take shelter every once in a while. I thought I'd draw a picture of a different kind of home. This animal does not make a nest in a tree. 
like a bird, though you can see some trees above the surface. And it doesn't build a dam with big logs like a beaver either. This little mammal digs in the ground, kind of like an ant. Can you guess what it is? It's our very own neighbor, the chipmunk. You may have seen them around in your own backyard. These little guys love making tunnels and storing nuts underground, as you can see here by my drawing. Can you see the two separate nut caches this chipmunk is storing for later? And there he is, sleeping in his nest underground, safe from predators. Now it's your turn to draw an animal's home. Take some time to include in your drawing what tools and resources your animal uses to change its environment to make a home. Look outside your window or go on a nature walk for inspiration. Or if you're feeling really creative, create your own imaginary animal and its home. Here you can see Katie created an octo bird that nests both in the water and in a tree. Where does your imaginary animal live and how does it construct a home? If you can't go outside today, one fun way to learn about how an animal changes its environment to make a home is to change your own environment and build a fort.